told me you don't really do commitment, trust me Consider your message received When you said you couldn't take us too seriously I must admit I was relieved Cause I never wanna play happy families with you But I like having you around I'm fully aware this is a flash in the pan But we can still have fun for now What's up? What's up? What's up my fellow Capricornians? Welcome guys. I hope you're having a phenomenally blessed day. Thank you for joining me for a moment in Vicky's House of Cards. Today we're going to go down the rabbit hole in regards to love. This is in regards to you though. What do you need to release so that you can let love in? Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel down below, set that notification bell so you always know when the next video does go live. Also a couple things here. Check out the description box for any timestamps and then make sure that you guys also read there if you'd like to support the channel. It is not required, it's just an offer and it is so appreciated so thank you to any and all. And also if you guys are hearing some noise in the background over the frequencies like a shh noise, it's because we just replaced the AC here and so it's right on top of us and it just happens to be kind of loud and so yeah. I, that's why I have frequencies going in the background, hoping that everything will work out for you guys. So I'm going to see what I can do about that in the future. Yeah, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it and see what information source has for our Capricornians, the collective. What does the collective Capricorn need to know about how to let love in? What messages do you have for them to let love in? How can we help them let love in? What messages can we bring to them to let love in, Source? I do have two new Oracle decks that I'll be sharing today. If you guys have been watching any of my other videos, then you know about these. But if not, I'm just super excited. They're beautiful cards. So, yeah. What does Capricorn need to know? How can we help them out to let love in, Source? What does Capricorn need to know? Okay. How can we help Capricorn out and help them let love in? get on with it what messages do you have for Capricorn how can we help them whoa okay cards is flying one went way over here we've got this one we'll start with we've got this one interesting energy coming out okay what other messages do you have for Capricorn how can we help them let love in what messages can we bring to them to help them let love in okay that one's trying to come out. All right. Look. We have the Knight of Cups on the bottom of the deck in the upright. Okay. Start out, we got the Queen of Wands in the upright. We have the Emperor. Uh, so off the bat, you could be dealing with an Aries. You don't have to be, but strong Aries energy coming through and the seven of swords in the reverse okay before I get into it I do want to get a clarifying card for both the Emperor and the seven of swords I understand where they're going with it but let's see if they're going to be some clarifying information here may I please have a clarifying card for the Emperor for Capricorn and how to let love in may I please have a clarifying card for the Emperor Thank you. Okay, the chariot in reverse. Okay. May I please have a clarifying card for the seven of swords in the reverse. May I please have a clarifying card for the seven of swords. Thank you, source. Let's see what that is in just a second. Okay, we have the four of swords. Yeah, so you're feeling trapped right now, Capricorn. What is going on with you guys right now? So, we've got queen energy again. I feel like you guys yourself are in a good place but there is a lot of people involved in your in your love life or you know yeah look at this we got another swords card representing the swords card we got another mystery card to represent the mystery card okay right off the bat you guys could be dealing with this is for some of you not everybody allow me to get a drink of water you guys could be dealing with something legal okay there's an energy of 
dealing with uh, legality coming in, there's a trial, there's something that you guys are getting involved with, but every party that's involved, okay, and I, I need you guys to know, I'm not going to be saying, oh, everybody outside of you is the one to blame, okay, so trigger alert before we really get into this. Both parties involved are acting very immature, okay, both parties that are involved are acting very immature. Um, you guys could be dealing with a Scorpio, you could be dealing with a Cancer, you could be dealing with a heavy Gemini, or no, excuse me, heavy Aquarius energy, or a Libra or a Gemini as well. Also, very focused on an, an Aries here, so you guys may be dealing with an Aries or have a child that's an Aries. Okay, it does not have to be. This could just be energy that you or the other person is exerting at this time. So, yeah, there's, there's a sense of... I feel like this is you, this Queen of Wands in the upright. Like, you're very much in a place of standing your ground. You're very much willing to do what it takes to get what you want. Good or bad, it doesn't matter. You're in a place of getting what you want. And it's like you're willing to offer love. Yeah, you're willing to offer love here. You're willing to offer an opportunity. I keep getting the sense, Capricorn, that there are kids involved. Like, I... I don't know why, but that is something that is very much on my heart right now, that there could be kids involved here, but there's a lot of tricky energy coming in, and this is what's keeping you from actually getting love, so maybe you have an offer coming in, or this is an offer that you're trying to give to someone else, like you have your back turned to it, and they have their back turned to you, okay, but there's a lot of people involved here, we've got the Queen of Cups over here, same thing, she has her back turned to everything right? It's like nobody's looking, look, everybody's looking away from everyone else with the exception of this page. But you feel trapped. You feel like there's no hope. You feel like you're, you're out of time is what I hear. You're out of time. And this is a room, this is a repeating energy of something that happened when you were a child. So you guys could have divorced parents, separated parents or step parents. It's like coming through so clearly right now and what's going on is there's somebody in the mix this could be you but again I'm getting the sense that you're this Queen of Wands you're very much set in what it is that you want and you're very confident with yourself ready to embrace this ready to really see this through but there's somebody in the mix that's very very vindictive there's somebody that's here that's very manipulative and they're very much in a place of they like they want to f enforce brute strength, okay? This is the first one out of all these readings that's had so many people involved. This person is very immature. This person is willing to go any kind of direction just to ensure that things work out in their favor, even though they don't, they don't even care. Like, here's the thing. Like, they don't care about the situation. And the reason I say that this is mirroring something that happened when you were a child is because it's like you're aware of how this works you're aware of how the situation is working but the thing is is this person feels defeated whoever this emperor is in the reverse okay like this is again i'm not getting that this is your energy but energy is fluid so it could be you as well take it as it resonates but there's this defeat there's this sense of defeat here and it's like i can't I can't get what I want because I know I'm getting stuck in a lost cause. Like, I know that I'm not going to get what I want out of this situation no matter how hard I fight because it's almost like you match them. Every time they come at you with a childish move, you too, it's like an eye for an eye. That's what I hear. An eye for an eye. And there's an offer here, but it's, it's almost like it's the last thing on your mind. Like, I hear, not until this is done. Not until this is gone. Not until this is over with. Like, that's what you feel so trapped by. You feel trapped by the emotional attachment to the situation. You feel very trapped by the emotional attachment to the situation. Right? And it's like, it's not that there's not hope for you. You know there is. You know that things will work out eventually. But right now, there's like this energy of not being able to move forward because there you get this sense of being trapped in the situation enslaved and this is all in your mind this is all in your mind like it's like you've got your emotions under control you've had to heavy cancerian energy coming through as well 
And it's like you've got your emotions under control. But the thing is, is that when it comes to the situation, it really kind of just blows you away. Like, why can't we just show up to the situation as adults and deal with it? And I feel like there's a father figure in your life that's the same way. If it's not a father, it could be a mother that's very masculine or it could be an Aries. But they manipulated you into doing what it was that they wanted you to do. And it's like eventually you saw that it didn't work out for you. That's one thing. I do respect you for Capricorn. When Even though you guys tend to be pessimistic about a lot of things, when you see something's not working, most of the time you guys will put your foot down and walk away from it, which I admire you guys for because not everybody's like that. But this is reminding me of a situation of... <sighs> Like, the, whoever this parent was or whoever this guardian was in your life was very, very back and forth with you. Like, I see a coin that just keeps flipping from side to side. Like, one day it's heads and things are okay. One day it's tails and things are just a disaster. And it's like, this is what made you so bold and embraced in your life. Because it's like, you knew that from a small, from a young child, you had to deal with this. And it's not that you're not a queen or a king energy. You are but when it comes to this, you also know how to play dirty and you're not afraid to play dirty in this situation. And they're telling you that in order to get out of this, you have to let love into yourself. You have to see that you are worthy of love. You have to see that it's okay to keep your emotions under wraps. But the main thing above all of that is to give yourself love. Is to give yourself, you know, the credit you deserve. I feel like this has been such a pivotal part of your life and this has been something that has reoccurred in your life time and time again and it's reoccurring now and this is saying that this energy it needs to be closed off and the only way to close it off is to really embrace this queenly energy and not be afraid to speak your truth and stop getting at like stop being an eye for an eye there is no eye for an eye for this especially with those that have kids involved remember what you went through as a child if this is what you went through again this is a very specific message if this is what you went through as a child did a did an eye for an eye make you feel better as a child it probably made you feel worse and it made you feel like it was your fault and I feel like that's why I'm getting the sense that there's a child in here because there's a child that's suffering. There's a child that's suffering and you guys are definitely putting this child in the middle without trying to. Okay, don't take it wrong. You're not trying to. Well, at least you're not if you're in this Queen of, Ener this Queen of Wands energy. But if whoever is in this Emperor Reversal energy is absolutely putting this child in the middle of things. And that's not to give you fuel to go and blame them again it's for you to ask yourself how can i de-escalate this situation because this eye for an eye situation is not working out this is you guys getting involved in a lost cause fighting for something that doesn't matter you're you're on guard on all sides but yet nobody's looking at each other nobody nobody's looking at one another it's like basically I hear the lawyer comes with the action or the situation that was present. They give me the action and then I respond. You're not willing to talk to this person on an adult level. Well, you need to find some kind of common ground, Capricorn. You need to find some kind of common ground. And again, I know this is a very specific message. You guys know your situation better than I do because this is a general reading. So take it as it resonates. This could have been just a parental situation that you're trying to heal from. And that's what they're saying. It's like you're not enslaved to repeat this for your whole life. That's why I keep getting a child. It's like this happened to you as a child. This situation, it may not be the exact same, but it's reminiscent of that. Okay? And so they're telling you, stop feeding into the trickery. Stop feeding into this. I need to do them one. I need to one up them. Okay, we're playing chess, not checkers, guys. Okay? And chess involves strategy. Like, you need to have strategy with your game. Because the only way to get through this is to strategically move your pieces so that you can have the upper hand. Not so that this person gets away with whatever it is that they're trying to get away with. There's something more to this than meets the eye. Okay? And the more you play the game of an eye for an eye, the harder it's going to be for you to get what it is that you're asking for. 
because at one point even the lawyers are going to see or even the people who are involved it might not even be lawyers it could just be family and friends even they're going to start seeing that this is just to get back at this other party okay and that's not fair that's not fair to involve everybody in that because you're hurt and you want to keep seeing this person hurt it's like I'm going to tell you guys this, and I know I've said this in other readings, but the thing is, is that when you anger, it's like holding onto a hot rock and only you get burned. All right. Buddha says it. Anger and bitterness is like drinking poison every day. You drinking poison every day and expecting this other person to die. Who's benefiting from it? No one. You're sure not. So can you find a way to forgive this person? And that doesn't mean that what they did was right. It wasn't. None of it was right. But can you forgive this person so that you can release the chains on yourself so that you can come at this situation with a level head? Look, okay, I'm going to take both of these, but I'm only going to read this top one that came out. Because this isn't fair to you. Look, be authentic on the bottom be authentic. It's time for you to be authentic and true to yourself. Trust the process. Let it go. Be real and true to who you are and how you feel. Okay, thank you, Kuan Yin. Yeah, okay. So let's start over here. What do we got? Reliability. Go. Okay, number 10. Yeah, it's time for you to be reliable to yourself. Stop relying on this eye for an eye to come through and to give you what you want because it's not. It never has. It's only created more upset. It's only created more situations for you. So become reliable to yourself and find that strength, okay? Find that strength and power within you and really truly embrace that because you deserve that. You deserve to be in a state of stability and right now I don't feel stable like this whole situation feels so unstable and again I apologize to those of you that are not dealing with this again this feels like a very specific message for maybe one or two of you guys but it could very well resonate for others of you guys because you know your situation so just understanding that right we have synergy coming up over this energy here they want you to find common ground. How can you let go of the anger and say, look, there's nothing we can do to change the past, but we can change the way we're approaching this right now. Can we come to some kind of common ground? And I know if this person is a narcissist, it's really hard to do that. But the less that you battle with them, the less that they'll battle with you. They're going to try hard at first, but then they're going to eventually lose. It's going to lose its, its potency. And they're not going to see the value in it anymore. And so they're going to come to common ground with you because it's not going to serve their purpose anymore. They're not going to see you in misery no matter how much they cause you, try to cause you misery. You're basically saying, I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm really done with this, this situation. I'm really done trying to, you know, be in this place of, of who's right and who's wrong. We're both in the wrong. We're both in the wrong. It takes two to tango. Okay, that's and at the end of the day, regardless if that makes you feel better or not, it doesn't matter because all situations it takes two to tango, especially when you get involved with somebody who's very manipulative. You got involved with them because you needed somebody to be there for you and they were there for you, and at the end of the day, it became codependency. This is you needing to work on your solar plexus chakra as well your confidence you don't feel very confident when it comes to anything in your life and so they're asking you to work on that because while you have an offer this offer is still pretty shallow this is not the king of cups or the queen of cups coming to you even though we have the queen of cups here this is this is the knight of cups and as much as he's a romantic he's still very shallow in the way he approaches love okay like his cup is shallow he doesn't have much to offer but he'll romance you and I feel like that's exactly what happened in this situation you were romanced and it made you feel good and now it's like now at once you want it to be all their fault but remember you still let that happen and it's not to blame yourself it's just to see again that there's two parties involved and there's always going to be two sides of the coin okay so let's read this first one yeah, so we have number seven. The only thing that is real is love. It says shift your focus back to love. 
Oh my gosh. Do you see that? Bring your focus back on love because it's like you've fallen out of love. You've fallen into a state of hate and anger. And then we have number 13, and it says miracles and blessings. Everything has its gift. And I think that's what they're telling you right now. You need to really look into this situation and see what is the blessing from this. Well, for those of you that have children, well, that's a huge blessing. That's a huge blessing in all of this. No matter how much this relationship hurt, would you really take it back to give your child back? Right? And I know some of you guys are like, you know what, I just don't want to have this experience on me. And I understand that. But it made you stronger. I want to read this one. Everything has its gift. This card came because there are many miracles happening in your life right now, even if it doesn't feel like it. The angels are asking you to look at how things are. Look again. You will find that your life is filled with miracles and blessings. Reflect on who you are in your journey to this point. Recognize and accept the blessings that have occurred in your life. Situations that were not ideal brought their own gifts and lessons. Your existence began with the spark of a miracle. Continual blessings and miracles continue to show up in the smallest of ways. Be willing to receive these gifts. An ethereal goddess with flowing hair reaches to catch a leaf from the various leaves floating near her. Her hair can represent thoughts or reckoning. Check in with your self-talk and beliefs. Are you open to a miracle? Be ready for the unexpected. Yeah, again, this is about coming back to your own worth and saying that even if things didn't work out the way that I felt that they should, it doesn't mean that they went wrong. It means that I have to come back to love and understand that the divine is working in my favor. And look at this. You have a mother or father's hand here holding a child's hand. You have children all over this card. Again, what did I say? This is this was so indicative that there's a child involved in this situation. Like it's very prevalent and it's coming out with these two cards. And not all of these cards are the same color. Look, you've got green, purple, yellow, purple. There's some pink ones in here, right? So for the two yellow ones to come out all together, there's blue ones. Like they're all different colors. And I shuffle these regularly, and that's the thing. It's like, so for two yellow ones to come out together, and different numbers, right? 7 and 13. Reconnect with your heart. Be authentic to you, right? Be authentic to you. It's like you've forgotten how to romance yourself because you've dealt with so much manipulation for too long. We have the Dynasty of the Divine Mother, number 8. We have 7-8 seven, coming out. 7-7 seven, seven is a powerful number for you. So 7 is talking about having luck if you change what it is that you're, you're currently doing. Let me just check. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Dynasty of the Divine Mother. The only wish of the Divine Mother Goddess is that all beings be spiritually free. And what is that? The, the chariot in reverse is talking about spiritual defeat. The Divine Goddess calls us to realize our true nature, to fall in love with our own divinity. Enlightenment is accumulation of many small steps. Each one is a drop of water forming a divine ocean of peace, realization, love, and unity within us. An ocean that washes away fear, separation, and scarcity and bathes us in abundance and bliss. You carry the torch of enlightenment within you, beloved. Let it shine every day. Sometimes we imagine enlightened, enlightened beings to be another species to everyday humans. Yet there is an old Eastern saying that goes, Before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Enlightenment is made manifest through the small actions we take each day. Sometimes the smallest action can feel like an enormous leap. Yet when that action is taken, we realize that the journey into peace is something we can choose to take at any moment. The dynasty of the Divine Mother is her spiritual legacy, her endless compassion for human suffering, and her intent to lift humanity out of ignorance and into peace, which shines through the oriental goddess like Kuan Yin, Green Tara, and Mazu. This oracle card indicates that your spiritual legacy is important on the planet. 
you are a channel of the dynasty of the Divine Mother for the enlightenment of all beings. We contribute to the Divine Mother's dynasty through the changes, excuse me, through our choices and creations from the inner thoughts we hold to the projects in which we invest time, energy, and money. These become part of a spiritual legacy we pass on to generations to come. Again, referring to children, the Divine Mother now guides you to realize that your soul is moving closer to personal enlightenment through this hardship, okay, and is beginning to live it from moment to moment. The more you choose to notice and appreciate these moments, the more they will happen for you. It is the realization of your own process of realiz realization taking place. That's a tongue twister. It is very exciting, and yet it will not take away from the world or your loved ones. It will not take you away from the world or your loved ones, as you might have feared subconsciously, beloved. It will simply make your light stronger, bringing blessing and peace through your being into the world and your relationships each day. Miracles and blessings. Again, talking about this is a blessing, even if it doesn't feel like it. Okay. Your personal enlightenment will help the planet in so many ways. You will only you will become a stronger spiritual light to which others can look so that they can find their way more clearly. You're being asked to surrender ideas about what enlightenment may look or feel like and to realize where it already is emerging from within. You will also receive guidance about your personal spiritual practice on a daily basis soon. You may be drawn to meditate in a different way, to work with sacred words or prayers, Tai Chi or Qi Gung healing arts, or to get acupuncture or massage more regularly. Listen to your heart. It knows unity and has the seed of enlightenment already within it. Follow your inner guidance. This is the luminous pathway to divine realization and living your everyday enlightenment. The Divine Mother has gratitude for you as a part of your spiritual legacy a member of the dynasty of the Divine Mother. This card is also guidance not to fear if your spiritual past appears to be losing some focus to matters in the day-to-day -day world. Your spiritual focus will return when the time is right, but for now, look to what is happening in your life as spiritual practice and trust that you are progressing with perfection. Enlightenment doesn't have to happen in an obviously spiritual place. Our life can be a temple for our soul growth if we are open to it from the heart. Let your heart rest peaceful, knowing that your spiritual light is shining bright and growing deeply. Exactly. So this is about coming into that place of understanding that even the hardships bring us sometimes the most important lessons. Right? This is connecting with your heart, your solar plexus, your heart, and your truth. Once you connect these three bridges in yourself, you're going to find that things are going to happen for you a lot quicker. They're going to happen a lot more stably, and you're not going to have to be fighting anymore to receive love in your life or fighting for what you think is right. It's more about you're going to know what's right, and you're going to know when it's time to fight and when it's time to back off. Right now, this is about an eye for an eye. It's not even about if this is right to fight for or not. This is feeling like I have to fight because that's what I've always had to do. And fighting is making you feel exhausted. And this is, this is the prison that you've created in your own mind. And this is about letting that go and allowing the spiritual enlightenment from this situation to emerge because you have something so beautiful happening to you right now, Capricorn, even if it doesn't feel like it. Come back to a place of love. However you can, come back to a place of love and watch your miracles and blessings form. They're already there. Sometimes we just don't know how to look for them. So begin to look to the small things and say, you know what, do you have a roof over your head? That's a blessing and a miracle, whether it feels like it or not. You have food on the table, water to drink. You have a car to get back and forth to work. You have a friend or family member that stands by you thick and thin. You have a beautiful child in your life. You have somebody to love. You even have a fur baby in your life. Whatever it is, find a way to come back to love and allow yourself to unfold into the divine being that you are. Because right now, I want you to know, Capricorn, you are so worthy and you're worthy of more than just a uh, shallow love investment you are worthy of somebody giving you an equal reciprocal love that you give okay 
and this is what I have for you. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel down below, set that notification bell. Make sure you guys check out that description box for more information. Until next time, go forth boldly, my fellow Capricornians, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love. Until we meet each other again, peace out. I love y'all. Bye.